Hi there. Today I'm going to make a little video about the Festool CMS table. This, um, this table has been out in North America for about a month now, a couple of months. I've actually had my router module here, the router plate for the CMS table, for about a year. Um, when I got my plate, uh, this, this was not available in North America. So what I did was I brought this plate back from England and I mounted it in an MFT 800, uh, cut out the insert and I mounted it here. And I'm, this is my router table. And I've been really happy with it uh, over the past year. I've used it a lot. One thing I've never used it for is jointing. There is a jointing feature on the CMS. It allows you to move this fence here. This is a split fence. This fence is fixed. It allows you to move this side of the fence back, um, which enables you to use this router as a jointer. Now, I've never used it um, in this way before, but I, because I prefer to joint using hand planes and um, you know my Festool track saw. But I do have uh, a need for it at the moment. I have a piece here. It's a curved door. Um, it's a bent lamination using a couple of sheets of 3 8 plywood with a veneer on top. And because of the uh, nature, I've got a lot of glue squeeze out here. It's a, it's a, it was a very successful lamination, um, but it's very difficult to join using hand planes when I've got this degree of, uh, of glue. It's going to be a very tricky um, process. So to give me a, a, a quick cleanup, I want to use my router, uh, my router table as a jointer. So let me to move this to one side and I'll show you how I did this. Now there are a couple of videos um, on YouTube. I know Festool made a video about using this as a jointer and Gregory Paolini made one recently as well. But there is one thing that they didn't mention in either of those videos. And when I came to set up my jointer, I found that my fences were not coplanar. Essentially, this fence was angled back slightly. So I'm going to show you why it's important for jointing purposes particularly if you um, are to have a coplanar fence here. If, and I've used, I'll use this wedge uh, for exaggeration, if I move my uh, material across the workpiece, I'm going to be taking off more material here as it meets the bit before it straightens out. As you can see, the distance to the bit is much greater here than it is here. Um, and that's magnified, obviously, with this large wedge. So I'm going to end up with either a, a concave or a convex edge, depending on um, the shape of this wedge. You can see here, if I move it here, I'm taking very little of the material here. And as I move in closer and it meets that fence, which is in line, I take much more material. So that's why it's essential to get these um, fences uh, in the right plane, in the correct plane. If we look at the back here of the left fence, the fence has two knobs which allow the fence to be moved side to side. But it also has two little screws here. What those screws do, they're, they're grub screws. They allow you to change the distance between this steel plate and the aluminum, aluminum extru extrusion. Um, so what you would do, if your fence is not coplanar, and what happened was the back of my fence here was a little bit, um, a little bit off. So using my straight edge, I had essentially a gap here. So what you would do to adjust that is you would loosen these screws, that gives you a little bit of play, and then you would take a screwdriver and change these grubs, either move these grub screws in or out. Then you would tighten the knobs. You want to make sure that uh, you check it after you've tightened your knobs, because what you can do essentially is get it nicely adjusted, check it for straightness, and then when you go to tighten, you you know, the, the tension on the uh, extrusion may, mo may move you out of plane, out of uh, parallel. So 
that's um, one adjustment that I haven't seen mentioned. So what you would then do is, if I move on to the more sort of standard uh, operation, I would loosen one knob here and I would make sure my fence is in line. I like to leave it a little bit back, like so. Like there. Tighten that up. And you want to have your fences as close as possible without obviously contacting the bit. Raise the bit here. I'm using just a straight, uh, straight bit with a bearing. And then what you would do is loosen this knob here. And I like to start with a, let's say, two tenths of a millimeter, just to make sure I'm correct. result. It's a wonderfully clean edge um, on both the long and the short sides of this door and uh, really fantastic. Just remember to uh, always reset your fence to zero. It's just good practice. Otherwise when you come back you may forget that you've uh, got it in the jointing position and that's going to be uh, awkward. Thanks very much for watching.